Spinal cord tumors are rare tumors of the central nervous system. They're much more uncommon than brain tumors. Patients can have difficulties with walking, using their hands, bowel or bladder functions, uh, or just a general sense of incoordination. Very often they can have a lot of pain. Sometimes they'll uh, uh, be found on scans done for other reasons and they're found uh, strictly by coincidence. Most tumors, uh, well all, the tu all tumors of the spinal cord uh, are defined by their location. Um, the most common ones are not really in the spinal cord, but they're next to the spinal cord. Uh, the, the next class are tumors that are actually within the spinal cord. Some of the uh, tumors found next to the spinal cord uh, can be observed, uh, but a lot of them require surgery. Tumors inside the cord, on the other hand, very often require surgery because they're progressive. Sometimes tumors are associated with syndromes like um, neurofibromatosis or von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. In this case you can find several tumors throughout the body, spinal cord, and brain uh, and you can very often find tumors in other organs in the body. In those cases it's important not to just treat the spinal cord tumor but to treat the tumors uh, or at least uh, uh, observe the tumors found elsewhere. Many uh, uh, we've operated on spinal cord tumors for several decades here. Um, they present very special challenges. They're some of the most difficult surgical cases in neurosurgery. We, we uh, most patients who we observe or we see with spinal cord tumors are initially seen by a neurologist where we do a complete and thorough examination and, and assess that we really think that the tumor is causing a problem and then they're referred to a surgeon. The surgeon recommends surgical treatment which can consist of a biopsy or more extensive surgery to completely remove the tumor. Following removal of the tumor, the patient's referred back to the neurologist as well as to other, other medical specialties like radiation oncology where further treatment for the tumor may occur. Um, sometimes radiation therapy is used. Sometimes chemotherapy is used, but most often we use radiation therapy. Very often following therapy. surgery, some pa patients need rehabilitation and physical therapy, and we, have, we usually refer those to the same specialists that take care of other patients with spine problems. Um, and sometimes that can be inpatient therapy, sometimes outpatient therapy. And most importantly, anybody who has a spinal cord tumor long-term needs to have follow-up. This means that you can't really just simply remove the tumor and then the, patient's, uh, the patient uh, uh, never sees a doctor again about it. Uh, very often we have patients come back every year to have another MRI to check for their tumor. Once we feel that they're, they're, they are cured, which can take a few years, then we, then we don't need to see them every year. We're, we have um, several um, ongoing projects looking at spinal cord tumors. Spinal cord astrocytomas, which are some of the hardest tumors to treat, there's very little consensus on the ideal treatment for them. So we have, we, uh, we are systematically looking at our results with these tumors and seeing what we think the best therapies are for those. We continue to refine our surgical techniques for removing tumors. We use a lot of sophisticated uh, technology to help us do this, including uh, imaging technology, special technologies to uh, monitor patients during surgery, and special technologies to help remove tumors in a safer fashion. Uh, in addition, um, we, um, uh, we have started to do something which we really didn't do about 10 years ago, which was look at patients we think are prone to develop spinal deformities as a result of the surgery and treat those more proactively than we did in the past. This can often mean a surgical procedure to reconstruct the spine to avoid serious future problems.